These are our first notes for the entire year. Chapter 3, Section 1, this is the beginning of English settlers coming to America, the reasons why they come to the New World, and what their goals are going to be. Remember that on the test, you're definitely going to have what a charter is. We're definitely going to talk about Jamestown on this test, and that Captain John Smith is going to be an essay question. And then later on in chapter 4, we'll get to royal colony and all the different forms of government. If you remember back to last year in 7th grade, you learned about how there was a giant war between France and England that lasted for about 100 years, hence the reason why it was called the Hundred Years' War. But England had also been fighting a bunch of other people, including Spain, after that time period. Their whole game plan was to try to get to India for that trade route, and they kept being blocked. And eventually, during this war with Spain, they were able to destroy their fleet of ships. And once the Spanish ships were destroyed, it gave England free roaming of the seas. They were allowed to go wherever they wanted by boat, and that's when they decided that they were going to take their boats... And they were going to travel west by water to try to get to India and ended up landing in what we know today as North America. Once the Queen realized that there was land there, Queen Elizabeth I starts sending people like Walter Raleigh. Remember that Raleigh is now, we have Raleigh, North Carolina. So once you're one of the first people that goes there, you get things named after you, which is kind of a really important thing to have. And they sent a hundred people, a hundred men, over to what is present day North Carolina, uh, an island called Roanoke. And those hundred men will eventually become, down here we have 117 people showing up, and then we'll get to eventually 144, and then a couple hundred, and then eventually tens of thousands of people showing up later on once they realize that it's safe. Roanoke is interesting because no one knows what happened to these people. John White had to leave and return to England for supplies because there are no food stores in the New World. There's no farmlands. There's no crop set up. They have no infrastructure to, infrastructure to survive. So he has to go back to England in order to resupply, in order to survive. And when he returns, everyone had left. Everyone had deserted this island. He came back and it was entirely empty. And the only clue of where people went was Croatoan, and that is believed to be an island that was south of Roanoke. And those people were uh, theorized to have gone there, and their boat may have got lost at sea. Native Americans may have captured them along the way, but no one has ever been able to figure out where they went. Now, uh, remember that this is the difference in technology that we have today. If you're going to go to the mall with your friends, you're going to just uh, pull up the magic device in your pocket and text whoever it is that you need to tell where you're going. Back then, it was carving basically just words into posts and hoping that someone was able to find it. And that level of uncertainty, are you going to survive or not, you could just be j just disappearing from the middle of nowhere, and then no one's ever going to hear of you again. It's a very scary thing. People don't necessarily want to go to the New World when that is a possibility. And because of the fact that Roanoke is a failure, and that it's that really bad advertisement that if you go to the New World, not only might you die, but you might disappear, and no one's ever going to hear of you again, King James I decided to make charters. And charters are just a piece of paper, but it's the meaning behind that paper that gives it its power. And it basically turns into what you learned about in 7th grade, a fief. It's a piece of land that the king will give you, and he wants you to go there and organize on it, and he wants you to do one thing with that. He wants you to make him money. And that first company that goes there that gets the first stock is called the Virginia Company, and they called this a joint stock company, and stock just means that you have ownership or you own a part of that company. So if that company makes money, you 
get to make money. If that company loses money, you would also lose money. And we're going to go over stocks later on in the school year more in depth about how you could buy stocks today in companies like Apple and Google and Disney and try to make money. And at the high school next year, you can start taking courses like investment management where they teach you all about that. And that's a job that you can have if you're interested in that type of field. And with this company comes those 144 people. So they keep uh, making more and more people come, more and more people are making it more safe to come. And that allows those numbers to start to rise. And once again, if you're one of the first, you start to have things named after you. So these colonists that are going into the Virginia company have started to name rivers and entire settlements after King James. So you get the James River, which is the river they sailed into, and then they settle eventually on Jamestown. And then we get to how Jamestown was actually able to survive. Uh, this is not John Smith. This is the Disney-fied version of John Smith. That is John Smith. Uh, yes, Pocahontas was also real, but this whole John Smith Pocahontas thing didn't happen. Disney kind of made that up. One of the major factors of surviving the New World is disease and hunger. And it's because of Captain John Smith that these people were able to survive. And that's why this is your first essay question option for the chapter three test. Remember, you're picking two of the three that we'll get to throughout these notes. And he's able to do three major things. He's able to force the settlers to work. He's able to help them explore the area. And he is actually making friends with Native Americans instead of killing them. And forcing the settlers to work is key because they're able to actually, you know, do stuff. If you give people the option of doing a job versus doing nothing, a lot of people will choose doing nothing. And when you first arrive into a new world, you need to be able to go, you need to build shelter, you need to find water, you need to hunt, you need to grow, grow crops. Uh, this is something that is key to their survival is having people actually do work in order to help people survive. Exploring the area, uh, figuring out what's safe, what isn't safe, where are Native Americans that might attack you, where is fresh sources of water? Are there any bears nearby that are going to attack you? So figure out what is safe and what isn't safe. And then the relationships with Native Americans is key because you can learn from them. Instead of fighting them and being a, having them be a constant threat to your survival, if you make friends with them, you can learn from them and figure out how they grow food, figure out how they hunt and fish, and then that way you can use their skills in order to survive. And just to show how important John Smith was, when he leaves and goes back to England, things start to fall apart. So it's that leadership that he brings to the table that allows the Jamestown settlers start to survive and then eventually do a little bit uh, better than everyone else was around them, mostly because they were able to grow tobacco and then they're able to sell tobacco. And when they can sell tobacco, they begin to prosper. And prosper just means that they're doing well. They're able to make some money. They're able to trade with Native Americans to get food. And eventually, they start doing so well that they want to expand. And you get a head right. And once again, this is basically just a thief again, uh, that they're given land, that they're supposed to work, and then they're supposed to give a piece of their profit to the people in charge. The biggest key is the House of Burgesses. They actually set up a form of government, and that form of government is representative. And this is the first time we're going to see this this year, and it's definitely not going to be the last. And every time we'll write rep the pub. A representative government is where they represent the public. People are allowed to have a say in government, which is huge compared to over in England where it was just a king one person or a queen making all of those decisions. So these one person rulers, these monarchies are going to be out in a new world. They want to make representative governments where everyone can have a say in what is going on in the new world. Eventually, the Virginia company stops making money. It's really hard to make money when the only people you can really trade with on a regular basis is Native Americans. The Native Americans don't use the same money 
that England is using. They're basically just trading them for food and supplies, which doesn't help the king at all. So they're turning little profit. They're not making enough money. So the king decides to cancel their charter, and he instead makes this a royal colony. And this means that the king is in charge. And when the king is in charge, the king gets to make all of the rules, which you had given the colonists freedom to be able to make their own decisions, and now you're taking that freedom away. Now you are making them have to follow your rules again, and this is just the start of that struggle and that battle in order to get the colonists that are going to revolt and fight back in the American Revolution that we'll get to in chapters 5 and 6 later on.